Remember, I have always insisted that I will do what is necessary. To prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon, and I will. But I also know that a diplomatic solution is the best way to get this done. And offers a more comprehensive and lasting solution. It is our best option. By far. And while it is always a possibility that Iran may try to cheat on the deal in the future. This framework of inspections and transparency makes it far more likely that we'll know about it if they try to cheat and I. or future presidents, will have preserved all of the options that are currently available to deal with it. To the Iranian people, I want to reaffirm what I've said since the beginning of my presidency. We are willing to engage you on the basis of mutual interests and mutual respect. This deal offers the prospect of relief from sanctions that were imposed because of Iran's violation of international law. Since Iran's supreme leader has issued a fatwa against the development of nuclear weapons. This framework gives Iran the opportunity to verify that its program is, in fact, peaceful. It demonstrates that if Iran complies with its international obligations, then it can fully rejoin the community of nations. thereby fulfilling the extraordinary talent and aspirations of the Iranian people. That would be good for Iran, and it would be good for the world. Of course, this deal alone even if fully implemented will not end the deep divisions and mistrust between our two countries. We have a difficult history between us, and our concerns will remain with respect to Iranian.
behavior so long as Iran continues its sponsorship of terrorism, its support for proxies who destabilize the Middle East. Its threats against America's friends and allies like Israel. So make no mistake, we will remain vigilant in countering those actions and standing with our allies. It's no secret that the Israeli Prime Minister and I don't agree about whether the United States should move forward with a peaceful resolution to the Iranian issue. If, in fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu is looking for the most effective way to ensure Iran doesn't get a nuclear weapon, this is the best option. And I believe our nuclear experts can confirm that. More importantly, I will be speaking with the Prime Minister today to make clear that there will be no daylight. There is no daylight, when it comes to our support for Israel's. Security and our concerns about Iran's destabilizing policies and threats toward Israel. That's why I've directed my national security team to consult closely with the new Israeli government. In the coming weeks and months about how we can further strengthen our long-term security cooperation with Israel. and make clear our unshakable commitment to Israel's defense. Today, I also spoke with the King of Saudi Arabia to reaffirm our commitment to the security of our partners in the Gulf. And I'm inviting the leaders of the six countries who make up the Gulf Cooperation Council Saudi Arabia. the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and Bahrain to meet me at Camp David. This spring to discuss how we can further strengthen our security cooperation.
while resolving the multiple conflicts that have caused so much hardship and instability throughout the Middle East. Finally, it's worth remembering that Congress has, on a bipartisan basis, played a critical role in our current Iran policy, helping to shape the sanctions regime. that applied so much pressure on Iran and ultimately forced them to the table. In the coming days and weeks, my administration will engage Congress once. Again about how we can play how it can play a constructive oversight role. I'll begin that effort by speaking to the leaders of the House and Senate today. In those conversations, I will underscore that the issues at stake here are bigger than politics. These are matters of war and peace, and they should be evaluated based on the facts. and what is ultimately best for the American people and for our national security. 4. This is not simply a deal between my administration and Iran. This is a deal between Iran, the United States of America. And the major powers in the world including some of our closest allies. If Congress kills this deal not based on expert analysis, and without offering any reasonable alternative then it's the United States that will be blamed for the failure of diplomacy. International unity will collapse, and the path to conflict will widen. The American people understand this. Which is why solid majorities support a diplomatic resolution to the Iranian nuclear issue. They understand instinctively the words of President Kennedy, who faced down the far greater threat of communism. and said, 
let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. One the American people remember that at the height of the Cold War, Presidents like Nixon and Reagan struck historic arms control agreements with the Soviet Union. A far more dangerous adversary despite the fact that that adversary not only threatened to destroy our country and our way of life. but had the means to do so. Those agreements were not perfect. They did. Not end all threats. But they made our world safer. A good deal with Iran will do the same. Today, I'd like to express my thanks to our international partners for their steadfastness and their cooperation. I was able to speak earlier today with our close allies, Prime Minister Cameron and President Olan and Chancellor Merkel. To reaffirm that we stand shoulder to shoulder in this effort. And most of all, on behalf of our nation, I want to express my thanks to our tireless. And I mean tireless Secretary of State John Kerry and our entire negotiating team. They have worked so hard to make this progress. They represent the best tradition of American diplomacy. Their work our work is not yet done and success is not guaranteed. But we have an historic opportunity to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons in Iran. And to do so peacefully, with the international community firmly behind us. We should seize that chance. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. John F.
Kennedy used this anti metaboly in both his inaugural and first. United Nations General Assembly speeches. Also, Senator Obama. Used this line as a candidate for president in his address at the Wilson Center. Barack Obama First update on authorizing targeted air strikes and humanitarian aid in Iraq Delivered August 9, 2014, South Lawn White House, Washington, D. C. Good morning. Over the past two days, American pilots and crews have served with courage and skill in the skies over Iraq. First, American forces have conducted targeted air strikes against terrorist forces outside the city of Erbil. to prevent them from advancing on the city and to protect our American diplomats and military personnel. So far, these strikes have successfully destroyed arms and Equipment that ISIL terrorists could have used against Erbil. Meanwhile, Kurdish forces on the ground continue to defend the city. and the United States and the Iraqi government have stepped up our military assistance to Kurdish forces as they wage their fight. Second, our humanitarian effort continues to help the men, women, and children stranded on Mount Sinjar. One American forces have so far conducted two successful airdrops delivering. Thousands of meals and gallons of water to these desperate men, women, and children. and American aircraft are positioned to strike ISIL terrorists around the mountain. To help forces in Iraq break the siege and rescue those who are trapped there.
Now, even as we deal with these immediate situations, we continue to pursue a broader strategy in Iraq. We will protect our American citizens in Iraq, whether they're diplomats, civilians, or military. If these terrorists threaten our facilities or our personnel, we will take action to protect our people. We will continue to provide military assistance and advice to the Iraqi government and Kurdish forces as they battle these terrorists. So that the terrorists cannot establish a permanent safe haven. We will continue to work with the international community to deal with the growing humanitarian crisis in Iraq. Even as our attention is focused on preventing an act of genocide and helping the men and women and children on the mountain. Countless Iraqis have been driven or fled from their homes, including many Christians. This morning, I spoke with Prime Minister Cameron of the United Kingdom and President Hollande of France. I'm pleased that both leaders expressed their strong support for our actions and have agreed. To join us in providing humanitarian assistance to Iraqi civilians who are suffering so much. Once again, America is proud to act alongside our closest friends and allies. More broadly, the United Nations in Iraq is working urgently to help. Respond to the needs of those Iraqis fleeing from areas under threat. The UN Security Council has called on the international community to do everything it can to provide food, water, and shelter. and in my calls with allies and partners around the world. I'll continue to urge them to join us in this humanitarian effort. 